G'day everyone and welcome back to the Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. This year presented by Automation Solutions, they're a Ripo Australian family business providing flexible automated systems to suit your business needs. Jump on their Facebook, Automation Solutions Australia, give them a like, give them a follow, support them because they are supporting us in bringing more content to you. So big thanks to Automation Solutions. Uh, before we get stuck into this episode, which you can obviously see might be about a couple of engines, We've got a new range of t-shirts, 1993 Bathurst t-shirt in black and white, really cool t-shirts there online, and a new 93 retro trucker hat, so it's got a cool retro design, 93 car on the front, cloth badge on the front, it's a real retro hat. So that be online by the time this uh, episode goes to air, so perkinsengineering.com.au, jump on the store, uh, we appreciate the support that everyone gives us. So without further ado, it's time to get stuck into this episode. Without a doubt, one thing I get asked the most about is the Perkins slide manifold on the Holden engine, which was famous for winning Bathurst in 1993. So we decided to do a, a complete episode on that. I've got a twin throttle Holden engine next to me here. I've got a slide uh, manifold engine here. We're gonna go and find LP, and we're gonna ask him all the questions we can about the slide manifold. We might even have one over on the bench over there that we'll be able to pull apart and have a look at. So we've managed to find LP scratching around the workshop. And uh, a big talking point is the Holden engines. Dad, tell us about the first one to your right, the uh, twin throttle engine. Yeah, this was the engine that came out in the first uh, walk and chores when uh, Holden uh, uh, had a substantial design change in their engine. They put new cylinder heads on, which were equal port uh, spacing on the inlets and had uh, twin throttle bodies. And uh, this was full for Group A racing. And this was a simple, the most inexpensive way to get a race uh, sort of horsepower out of one of these engines. And so that's what uh, this was all about way back then and uh, I'll lift the lid off and that's you can see the trumpets and everything there but uh, for 100% um, racing it, it did have limitations with the twin throttle bodies tr in other words trying to convert the uh, a road car something that still worked on the road to a race engine so we went then from that once the rules changed again to where we had free inlet manifold and this is when uh, uh, I, I, I knew you know, the cylinder head had equal spacings on the uh, inlet side, which meant you could have a good throttle, uh, a, what we call a thride throttle, and this was the evolution that uh, came to my th uh, you know, slide throttle. And I, uh, Jack's got one here prepared up. Uh, this particular one is our prototype, and you can see when I pull that, you know, the, 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 all, the, all the ports open together now. You couldn't do that on the early engine because obviously there were unequal spacing. So this prototype, though, was, had a flawed design and uh, with both sitting there like that, when you hit the brakes, it went on to full throttle. Uh, so you had to, um, uh, we made a change to where I then put a the arm to work, these uh, thr slide throttles, I put in the middle so that one went forward and one went back and the weight of the slides balanced things out. So these were superb and we made about uh, 20 units and I'll just lift the top off here to see how, to show you how it works underneath. It sits on ball bearings and uh, needle rollers, etc. So I'll, I'll take this off and uh, show you what it looks like under there. But uh, while you're doing that then, the gains on the dyno before you got on the track, were they instantaneous? Almost, absolutely, because, uh, uh, you know, we had a much better inlet manifold. You know, in other words, the air getting into the engine was unrestricted, and uh, it was then also the rules allowed us to uh, add metal to the original castings, which Holden did for me, and I, I made special heads, lifted the port up nearly 20 mil, uh, did a real good job on what we could do on the inlet manifold because I didn't have to worry about a road car uh, application which is what the original Group A was all about so it was an uncompromising design but I had experience with these throttle slides from my Formula 3 days in Europe uh, with my uh, four cylinder uh, engines there and um, uh, it was just the right way to go and uh, uh, 
I had a good draftsman, Paul Karuki, and he drew these up and, uh, yeah, it was quite a job to fit the, as you can see, fit the trumpets in left to right and so on. So that that was, a, you know, a fair bit of pencil work, good pencil work by Paul, and um, uh, but the, the end result was uh, tremendous. So on the dyno, this seemed like the right design, having the throttle linkage pulling forward, but it was a flawed design as soon as you got on the racetrack. Yes, well, I, for some reason I had overlooked the weight of the, the uh, throttle slides and uh, the, their steel throttle slides, whereas uh, uh, if I had a, had a better budget, I would have made them out of some composite material. But I used steel, spring steel, and uh, that sits there. And then th this is the throttle slide made out of uh, a two and a half mil thick steel. And you can see the ball races there that... Uh, it, it sits on balls and so on, just you can see it like that, so it, it moves very light, but it is in itself quite heavy, so that, you know, that was, once we established the attachment in the middle of the slide, matched to its mate in the middle and forward and back, it balanced out, so it was superb, so I'll just lift this off carefully, probably balls might go everywhere, nope, there that's, we are, that's you, the slide plate. you can see the thrust, was carried on those uh, uh, rollers and balls, all six mil, and that gave about a two thou gap to here, uh, and then there's the thrust and so on. But that none of this ever caused problems uh, once we got this design up and running like this. So it was it was a real game changer for us. We could then use the um, injection system we used. We used Autronic, uh, and you could match each cylinder perfectly to the uh, induction air and, and so on. You could measure the air fuel ratio out of each cylinder, which we did all the time. And uh, we had a significant uh, power advantage when we first started with this. So can you use the slide throttle manifold on the normal twin throttle heads or will that not work? Well, you could, but there's a mismatch when that matches up to the cylinder head. Um, you have to obviously matched the port and the original heads from the Group A engine, the ports were quite low so you had to bog the bottom of the port up a fair way, around 20 mil, and then grind metal out the top. So it was a bit of a, uh, a lash up, not, not something that was ideal, but when I uh, was able to make heads, or well, Holden could make heads with the metal in the right spot for racing, it was a superb uh, it was a very high port, it was a very direct path, as you can see, straight into the cylinder head uh, like that, and uh, uh, full uh, ability to the, alter the ram length, or the length of these uh, uh, inlet uh, trumpets, and um, uh, yeah, it was just a great, it was a nice way to design it. You can see the fuel rail sat in the middle. Uh, it was all nice and simple, and this, this is the uh, one going forward and one going back uh, design I, I talked about. So um, uh, we never ever had a problem with this. We never ever had them stick or anything like that. But but this is the you know, the normal design of a full blown race engine right across the world. And there's a machining pattern that needs to be done to the mounting. So the mounting holes uh, for the cylinder heads are here, here, and here. Yes. And then, that, then the cylinder head needs to be modified to, to cop those mounting screws. Yes, you, you've got to obviously bolt this onto the... I won't lift this one up because the balls will fall out, but I'll lift this one up. This bolts then straight onto the side, if you like, of a cylinder head like that. So yes, there's uh, unique mounting bolts uh, in the cast iron, uh, and then, then you ported it once it's... Yeah, you know, tidy up the ports once it was all together. And, and on the production ones, you can see the aluminium screw caps over those holes. Yes, they're, they're just to hide the uh, uh, um, attachment bolts. And uh, because there is a small uh, two or three thou clearance, there is some air leakage around there. Uh, so you, didn't, you don't want extra air, especially at the very low end of the throttle, sneaking in so this was sealed around there so all the air that entered had to go down through the trumpet and then this engine was superseded by the 18 degree chev but you couldn't run the slide manifold on that particular engine yes the um chev uh 
No, the, the, the throttle slides were banned after uh, I'd uh, swamped the field with it. Uh, my, my good friendly mates in the teams ganged up on me and voted it to be illegal to have throttle slides and you had to have butterflies. And uh, um, this is how the, their version of com competition was. Let's keep banning things that LP wants to come up with. Well, that's a bit more insight on the slide manifold from LP. Uh, we get a lot of people ask, do we have any slide manifolds for sale? No, we don't. Are we going to make any more? Possibly not. They're quite a difficult process. As you can see, a lot of moving parts, they become quite expensive, and then that's what, what turns a lot of customers off. So that uh, prototype set there, set number one, we may look to sell one day, but it's a pretty cool piece to have lying around. When we made this video, this actual twin throttle body engine, we decided to put it on the market. So this engine's currently for sale. Um, if anyone's interested, inquire within. Um, but thanks again to tuning into that episode. Uh, I've got to thank again Automation Solutions for supporting us this year. Um, they're an Australian family business we've touched on. Uh, they offer custom cost-effective robot systems, palletizing, machine loading, folding, you name it, they do it. So jump on their Facebook page, Automation Solutions Australia. Keep supporting the people that are supporting us by bringing you more videos. Um, jump on our website, perkinsengineering.com.au. Don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And thanks for the support.